This is an overview of the project management application and how it can be used to drive uh, billing, invoicing, expense reporting, and just general financial reporting as it relates to project management. So the first thing you're going to want to look at is uh, products. That's what you're going to be selling. Services, consulting, fixed, and t &M. And if you drill into these services, here is where you define the invoicing policy. Whether you're basing on what is ordered or a fixed amount, you can define how you're tracking those services here. Or you're billing on a TNM or timesheets amount. Now, with that defined, then we can actually go and create an order. So this is where you'll see the integration. And I'll we'll create a customer quick. John Doe Inc. Here you'll see the integration. So let's say we bill some fixed for this project, and also uh, for now we'll just leave it fixed. Yeah. Or actually, let's start with TNM. TNM, we'll just we'll sell five hours up front at one twenty-five an hour. And you'll see here the minute I go ahead and confirm that, it automatically creates a new project and a task within that project. And I can drill down into the task and see the task here, see the project it's in, which is a brand new SO1 standard consulting project, sales order item, which is related to the actual line item, SO1, which is the consulting TNM. Up here, you're gonna have visibility into your tasks, subtasks related to this task, the sale order that this task stems from, naturally. And of course, down here, you'll have a description, and then you can have your timesheet visibility here as it relates to this specific task. So you'll see I can edit and add timesheets in a few ways. I can add a line here. We'll just call it test and we'll add our five hours showing us we're at 100% of what we've sold. Just like that. And if I go back to the set order, you'll see the integration here. Ordered quantity five, now delivered quantity equals five. And you'll see the timesheet entry here. If I go ahead and invoice for that, you will see a change. Before I even actually proceed with that line, let me save it. You'll see everything is going to be dynamic. Delivered now equals zero. And if I go to my employee record, you'll see here in HR settings, I can define my timesheet cost. Let's say I'm $90 per hour. So now when I go and add time again, this time I'll show you a new way to add time. You can go directly into the timesheet app. You can add a line here. You can add a line here. Or you can use this cool app we have, which you can install on an Android or iOS device, which allows you to add time just like this. See our project, see our task, time spent, summary, and just save it. It shows you today all the time you've logged. Now when I go back to that project, and I look at SO1, standard consulting project, drill into this, you'll see the 12 hours have been delivered. And now if I go to that sale order, let's see the delivered quantity is 12 hours. Let's go ahead and invoice for that 12 hours. Just like that, I can validate. Now, you'll see, go back to the sale order, delivered quantity equals 12, invoice quantity equals 12. If I so much as add one, if I add even a half hour onto this, or we'll say 15 minutes. You see it's invoiced when it's grayed out. If I had 15 minutes here, if I go into my sale order, immediately you see it's ready to invoice again, and you'll see I need to bill for this difference, which Odoo will automatically compute. And you'll always be able to know what, what orders you have to invoice based on going to orders to invoice. And it'll tell, see, it'll show me sale order one, because there's a discrepancy in terms of what has been delivered and what has been invoiced. The minute there's a discrepancy there, it shows up in this list. Now, with that being said, let's uh, inject some expenses into this uh, scenario. And then we're gonna get into the reporting, such as lunch, uh, just a normal expense. I'll say it was $129, and here I can relate it to my project. Just like that, I'll create my report. Of course, it'll tell me to submit to manager, and since I'm the manager, I'll also have the ability to approve this. 
tag and post my journal entries. Now, that's what an expense like an employee would submit, where they can you know, have lunch, gas, flight, etc. cetera. Um, there's also expenses which are related to vendor bills, which we can see here. So I can say I, from uh, vendor X, maybe it's some materials we use for the project. Um, I'm just gonna create the product on the fly. And we can link it to our project here. Just like that. And the minute we validate that, it's gonna push it into the project. So what, do, what have we done so far? We've invoiced the set order. We've put some timesheets down on the project. We've created an expense and we've created a vendor bill. We've linked them all back to the project. Let's see what that project looks like from an overview perspective, right here. Right here we can see our, and this is important for you I think, because you mentioned to differentiate between fixed and timesheets. Timesheets we see we've built a total of 12 hours and 15 minutes. 100% of all time which has been used on this project comes from timesheets. You see we have other options, right? Fixed, no task found, or not billable. This will show you the percentage per each of total time billed. Here's profitability. You see how much we've invoiced, how much we have to invoice, how much our timesheet costs were for all the labor you know, involved on this project. Other costs, which include both your vendor bill as well as your uh, expense. And then, of course, I can always go into, if I want to know the details of this, I can go into the analytic account, which is sale order one up here, and see my debits and credits, and look at my cost revenue, and see all the different line items here and their amounts, and I can see how I'm faring on this project so far, and I can see I'm negative $281 in the hole. You'll also be able to install budgetary positions here as well, which start and end date per line, a planned amount, which is what you intend to uh, spend uh, or earn according to this particular time frame, a practical amount, which is um, essentially what you are, trying to, what your actuals are. Theoretical amount is what you should be at given the specific time, uh, given the specific date and time that you're currently at versus where you start and end. And then the achievement will tell you a percentage in terms of how you're trending against that, uh, that budget. So you may have a year-long project. You'd have 12 budgetary lines here uh, with a start and end date, one per each month. And then you have a planned and theoretical and actual amount and an achievement listed uh, across, the, across the board. And then obviously you see your project that this rolls into right here. You'll have all your documents, tasks, timesheets. So let's just go back here to the order. And let's say they want to add some fixed consulting on this project. It's as simple as this. Oh, and I should notice, note here, I've had I set up that expense report to bill it back to the client, so it'll automatically add it to the open sale order associated with this client for this project. That's pretty cool, I think. Now for this, you'll see let's add uh, our fixed. And let's sell, you know, 35, 135 fixed hours. Save it. Just like that, if I go to my what I need to invoice, first off, you'll see when I added that, it added a task to the project. So now if I look at my tasks, you'll see I have one for fixed, one for TNM. And now if I go to my in orders to invoice, I'll see set order one is there. And when I create my invoice, it's gonna pull everything new that has been added to that order since I last uh, invoiced for it, which includes the 0.25 hours of consulting, the expense, in 135 hours of fixed consulting. And once I validate this, it creates the invoices and then I wait for my payment from the client. I can send the invoice out, receive payment online, wait for the check, wire, however I handle that. But if I go back here to the project overview, um, like that, now you'll see that for this, I have uh, some differences in terms of how I've set this up. So you can, uh, you'll see all of the, the financial aspect of it tied back into here. The way that you have to adjust this with the fixed is you need to make sure it's associated to the right analytic account when configuring the billing for the fixed, uh, for the fixed cost. But essentially what it does is it rolls everything up into your project and this project is the same thing as an analytic account. This will show you your cost revenue. And lastly, another very cool feature is in the accounting app, 
you can actually go into your uh, journal items group by analytical count save as favorite we'll just call this an AA report and then I can go to my settings first actually I'm sorry I need to be in debug to configure this but I can go to the financial report just like this P&L and I can add my AA report here and this will let me view all my projects across the lens of a profit and loss. So now I can see John Doe project through the lens of the P&L. Uh, and then if I had a bunch of different projects or if I wanted to do comparisons across periods across projects, you know, you'll be able to analyze all that data, which is very, very powerful uh, given that I work, you know, work for a PS company and I've seen my management you know, analyze different reports and projects. And, you know, slice and dice data in very interesting ways. So, in a nutshell, that is how project management is going to work. Um, if you have additional questions or you want to see how all this stuff ties together, if anything that I've pointed out is unclear in this video, let me know and I'll be happy to drill back in and touch on anything that concerns you. Thanks so much. Have a great day.